He went back in the fire to get the burnt body? Damn, that's desperate, bro. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek X Sex Chic, and we are here with the series finale of Sweet Home, season three, episode eight. So it has been an interesting ride up until this point. At the last episode, I said that I kind of felt like it could have been combined potentially with this one that I'm about to watch. I haven't seen it yet, but last episode, I just feel like we didn't have any major developments that we didn't already lead up to in all the previous episodes before that. We have that Sung Won took over Isu's body, which is something I think we all knew was gonna happen. I, I predicted very early in the season that this was gonna happen, so that's done. And we have Hyunsu finally arriving at the stadium along with Eunyuk. Eunyuk went looking for the pod, but then he inevitably found out where Sangwon was. And we see that Hyunsu found Sangwon, well, he found Isu and then figured out that it was Sangwon. And he attempted to use the ability that he used to bring, um, what's her name, Lee Kyung back to try to free Isu, but this is a completely different situation. We see that the first attempt that Hyunsu tried failed miserably. And now Sangwon has then now pulled all of the monsters that I'm not sure some of them were turned by Isu and I think he probably turned some more in the meantime, but there's a whole army of those suckers now coming at Hunsu and Eunyuk. And I think the hard part about this is that um, we know that, yeah, Hyunsu doesn't really like to hurt people if he doesn't want to. And now that he knows he could potentially bring these people back, I don't know how down he's going to be with taking them all down, but I don't think he's gonna have much choice. So that's what's going on there or gonna be happening in this episode. And then we found out that Eunyu is symptomatic. So she stayed back and didn't go to the stadium. And then we see that the rescue, the, not the rescue, the, um, the evacuees were all trying to escape and then Tak finally gave into his monsterization and became a literal wall. So that's kind of what we had going on, I think, last episode. So let's see how we wrap this all up. I'm very curious and uh, a little bit bittersweet that we're at the end of the road, but I think I'm ready. So, but just before I do, a reminder that if you would like to be in the know of when I drop episodes to different shows that I am reacting to, this one is done, but I'm going to be reacting to a lot of other great stuff. So please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can be in the know. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Just trying not to hurt them. That's not gonna work, bro. Hey, Onyuk! Yeah, Onyuk's not caring. He's killing all these mofos. There's too many of them. Like, I'm sorry. We don't have time for mercy. I have yet to hear a plan. Kyunsu, I don't hear a plan. <laughs> what the hell is that now? Yeah. All right, so still has the tentacles. Nothing. She's fighting! Where is he going? It's because he thinks she's dying, that's why. She can heal herself. She's gonna be like 45 when she comes out of it this time, I guess, but. Come on, you wanna live, come on. You know you can. It's true. Oh. Oh, she meant like why she let him take over so easy. Aw, look! It's Yonsu. I mean, at this point, it's not, but you can. I mean, if you want to, I think your monsterization can heal you, but oh, you're gonna see your mommy. I mean, it's sad, but in a way, I feel like this is not the world for her. But honestly, it's a bit of a disappointing arc to her story. Yeah, she wanted to go because we've seen that she can heal from far worse. She was shot like eight times. Oh, are you keeping her alive, Yunsu? I feel like he is. Poor Yunsu, though. Sister figure, gone. Later. 
the thing is, I'm really not that mad at, at Inyuk. Like, we don't know how long that would have taken, what he could have done to her in the meantime. Like, and again, she wasn't fighting him to the last minute, so. She's like, respectfully, I'm gonna break this wall. <laughs> If you lose a hand. Women always getting it done. So y'all coming? <laughs> I mean, does she look dead to you? I think I think he's needing to keep the monsters in and let you guys out. Yeah, she's like, I got nothing to lose. <laughs> Women getting it done every time. I wonder if uh, acid hands will be able to get through. Thank God for the crazy girl, huh? Y'all would have stood there till eternity went by. Yeah, come on, let's go Skippy. With your fake hand. Exactly, he said you can't go. That's what he meant. Bro, your hand's the wrong direction. Did anyone else notice? Oh, forgot they had beef. I keep forgetting from last. Yeah. You don't want to look me in the eye? Who shot that? <laughs> She's helping you. Run, hurry. Dislocated him, smart. Yeah, y'all, you gotta try. Yeah, she can't go through. Right? Poor girl getting burnt up. Go on your hands and knees, you go faster. Yeah, this would annoy me. I'm sorry, I'd have to be like, oops. Go! Oh, you looking back, that's some BS. Boy, you better do some parkour right through that wall. That's right, she said, stay with me, bitch. Ooh! That was hot, Kim, that was hot. I kinda wanted the spider girl to live, but it's probably best they all die. What's your gonna... Which body did he take now? He went back in the fire to get the burnt body? Damn, that's desperate, bro. Oh, he took the other guy, the rock man. Gotcha. <laughs> Careful, he would definitely go for your body. How do you even scoop him up? That'll take all day, exactly. Right? Like, how many people are gonna die? That's what you should have asked before. Then you can kill me. I'm What? How? Is this a shapeshifter? Because he burnt the crap out of that body. I mean, I get it. They contracted this actor, but still. That's true. Oh, the burns are coming back. How interesting. Kanchana? <laughs> And why'd you take it again? And I still don't understand how it's back. Did he heal it? Still fighting. Still fighting. Damn. What a badass. But I still don't understand. I'm sure we saw him burn up. I'm con I'm confused. He's making you stay in the body. Stand back. 
It looks like he's handling it, bro. Yeah, Sangook can keep him in there. That's a great detail they did with making the burns come back. Because that's that's the real Sangook. Oh, Sangook ca crawling to the fire? Damn, he is a bad, he's not scared of it. He's already been through fire once. That was actually the best solution. Very plot armory, but best solution. That he did. I guess with this part, y'all could just like give him a little push. <laughs> you could just use your wing and give him a little nudge there. <laughs> Either of you, but okay. It's so weird. Why would he pick this body again? He knows he got trapped in it the first time. That's on you. Seriously, Sangwon, that was dumb. By the way, what fuel did they put in this fire? It's been burning for 16 years. <laughs> Monsterization healing her now. Do these two actually get out? I have no idea actually if the crazy lady and the priest managed to get out. We didn't see them join the group. Who's this now? Priest, okay. Answered my question, they got out. Best of luck to y'all. Did Isu somehow walk all the way back to the Green Home Apartments? <laughs> Very interesting that it's her brother's voice that's haunting her in her monsterization. <laughs> you sure you really want to be close to him again? Hmm. Oh, she's back in her room. I mean, that's a nice way to go into your monsterization. A lot less horrible than other people. So you get a peaceful monsterization and you're still upset. This woman is impossible though, please. You know how many monsters have violent delusions? Constantly? Kyunsu should have shown you what some of them were going through. Really, Isu, nothing? Okay. Just need a shower, clearly. Like, what, what do we do about it at this point? Except he's lying. Back where it all started. Okay. Yeah, he's like, it's not really my call. Sir, you don't get to decide my life for me. Like, bro's made it abundantly clear you don't want to be with that girl. Let him, if he wants to come back, let him come back. He's immortal. He's got time. See, she's always been miserable. Though from the looks of things, I don't know that those are warm memories for him. <laughs> Look, I feel ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so some of it's true then. Some of his emotions are gone, but they're not completely gone. What's super sad is that her becoming a monster would be for the best at this point because it would heal her. But who knows, she might turn into something that's even worse, so. She's still taking him. Good for you. Dry swallow, damn. Fight as long as you can, sis. You never know, could turn around. Where'd they even find these? Okay, where'd they find a truck? I guess these are details of the plan we just didn't get a chance to see. Oh, the crazies found each other. Not this man having a harem. The amount of scar tissue with these people from testing daily. About Jisoo. She might end up being like him, though. She might just end up being an immortal. 
Um, didn't they bomb the crap out of that? I mean, they are just sitting in the open right now. I, I don't know. It's the cute way they keep carrying these guns like they do anything. Are these the zombies she left? Huh? Their eyes aren't whited out, so did y'all just hanging out in the streets? Or are you the neo-humans? The scraps? Y'all talk? Anyone? Bueller? All right. Stand here having a stare off, I guess. Scraps. Talking with our expressions? So he came back as a human. And that's Isu. Okay. So she went to the heart then. Look at that. She neo humaned. How convenient. I need to know where these fresh clothes came from. Like, do you come back with a full set of brand new clothes when you come out of the heart? Because these fits are fresh. Oh, you learned to smile. Sweet home. Sweet home. Saw that one coming. Really? That's how we ended it? All right, Billie Eilish again. They love that song. They must have paid a lot for it. Okay, guys, well, that is it. We have wrapped it up. This is the end, and I'm gonna be 100. I do feel like it felt a bit anticlimactic considering we built up to this over two seasons in a way. But in the same vein, I don't wanna get too harsh because, you know, there's a lot of factors like budget, first of all. But also this is like the scale of this was never big in the sense of like, obviously it was an apocalypse show. So it, it was supposed to be at least all of Korea, but it was never like we were going to different locations and there was like these large scale battles or anything like that. Like it's always been a rather small scale show. So I suppose the ending ended up working out being kind of the way it should for the level of show this is. Not to mention the fact that I do think, you know, budgetarily, since these are monsters, the amount of money it takes to make a, an effects fight is not easy. It's it's quite pricey. And we have had a lot of effects this season from the beginning to the end. We've seen a lot of different monsters and monster battles. So yeah, as much as I would have loved to see something a little bit more badass for our finale, I guess it is what it is. I think the main thing is, again, there's really not much to say. Like, I, I hate to say this, much like the last episode, I feel like there wasn't much new information, really. We got everything kind of between episode six and seven. And then I feel like, like I said, this episode and seven could have been combined and just made one long finale, in my opinion. But yeah, essentially, we know from what Unyuk said a couple episodes ago that he thinks that with this whole monsterization, it's a whole evolutionary process and that most of the people who change into monsters will eventually become neo-humans, AKA just immortal, right? Basically the way he and Miss Kim and all the, the scraps as, um, as a Sang Sangwon, sorry. I, I, can't, I keep mixing up Sangwon and Sangwook, the two different people who shared the same body, but moving on. Um, so that's kind of like where everyone, not everyone, but most people they believe, at least Unyuk believes, most monsters are gonna to evolve to that point. It just depends on whether or not they get taken out. Now, obviously, I don't think that really works necessarily for all of the, the first wave of monsters, like the ones that were very mutated, but we don't know, right? Because if we look at what happened with Junsu, so with Yunsu, Yunsu was turned into a pile of slime. <laughs> he was turned into a pile of slime, so but he seems to either be a neo human or we don't know, actually we didn't even see, but it's possible that Hyun Soo brought him back because he did say I could. So maybe he just pulled him back from it. We don't know, I guess we're never gonna know. But we see that um, that Jisoo ended up becoming a neo human. What we saw, I guess, with her kind of, her body starting to pulsate and do whatever it was doing was because she was about to go up into the heart. But they of course didn't let us see that because they wanted to show us at the end. But I said, I thought there was a small possibility that, that something like that might happen. But it's kind of interesting that that's what happened this time when we saw in season two that she has a heal ability. Like she can literally put herself into a cocoon and heal her body entirely. So 
I don't know, I guess for the sake of the plot, they decided not to have her do that this time. But I mean, it, I don't know, like I said, it would have been fine if she did that and then came back and she was like a full grown woman this time. But I guess the main thing is that the theme I got from this episode is that the idea of the, what she could do as far as turning people into base monsters, that was not needed in this world anymore. We needed to move up to the neo-human evolution. And so it sounds like from what Unyuk said he believes that a good chunk of people are going to become neo-humans and then there's going to be a handful of humans that are just going to die humans like that's just the way it's going to go and that eventually it'll balance itself out so anyways we got to this episode and we had our final battle and I'm sorry I put that in quotes because as I said very anticlimactic when you think about it I mean yeah there was the hordes of the zombies but they're all human for the most part like no none of them had any special monsterization abilities so much like we saw last episode where Sang Won was able to just wipe them out quickly. I mean, Inyuk, who doesn't have anything outside of his speed and strength, was able to take out a good chunk of them. And we saw that, I mean, clearly we know that uh, Hyun Soo didn't really want to take them all out, but with his wing, he was able to take out a bunch of them, at least knock them down. But anyhow, once that wasn't working, we see that, you know, Hyun Soo really wanted to try to coax Sang Won out of Isu's body. But in my opinion, sadly, smartly, I think that Unyuk was right. Like, we ain't got time for that. Like, we need to get, we need to get him. We need to do it because he could slip into another body, one we don't even know what it is, and it could take us God knows how long to figure out where he is again. So, we have him here, we have him trapped. If that's the body he dies in, so be it. And I get that's harsh because obviously Isu didn't deserve any of this. She's literally the victim in all of it, but I get where Unyuk was coming from. From the cold logic perspective, I get it. But obviously, you know, Hyunsu, Hyunsu, that's his little sister, right? He raised her since she was literally a baby. So he, of course he's not willing to give up on her like that. But anyways, in the end, we see that because Hyunsu ended up being taken by some flying monster out of nowhere, like, <laughs> that was just a weird, very plot devicey thing for this thing that we've never seen before. I don't even think we saw, I'd have to go back, but I don't think we've ever seen a flying monster up until now. Most of them have been ground or grounded, but conveniently we now have a winged monster that came and kept Hyun Su busy just long enough for Unyuk to get that shot at Jisu, but, or Isu, pardon me. But what's interesting is that Isu, we see that, Sangwon used his ability, was trying to use his ability to attack Unyuk, but we hear Isu's voice say, get out, right? She kind of does one last fight and she doesn't actually manage to push him all the way out, but she stops him from being able to use his abilities. And you see, he's like, huh? Right, much like what happened when he was inside of Sangwon's, uh, Sang Wook's body, right? The resistance came from inside. So by the time he tried to figure out the fact that he didn't have full control anymore, he got hit right in the heart with um, with the weapon. And then of course, because Isu was dying, he decided to jump out, right? And he needed to find a new body. So he didn't have time, of course, uh, we see because of all the chaos, Unyuk didn't have enough time to go grab. Again, he was like, I need to figure out a way to take Because when he's in that liquid form, I guess they can't figure out a way to kill it. So anyways, we see that that didn't go over well with Hyun Soo because he realized that Isu must've been hurt very badly if Sang Won left the body. So he did manage to finally get himself free. And him and Isu have, you know, a nice little goodbye scene where, you know, she apologizes, you know, for turning people into monsters and he apologizes for not getting there sooner. And then she tells us that she actually didn't resist, which is what I saw. Like last episode, I was like, she did nothing to stop her dad. And um, he, she's like, yeah, she's like, I let him do this because I wanted us to die together. I figured if anything, let's, I wanted it to end with me. And so anyhow, um, she basically said she's okay with dying though, because she wants to see her mom. And of course that was very sad because Hyun Soo knows that the one thing that Lee Kyung wanted was to try to protect her daughter at all costs. But anyhow, um, then we see that little Yun, Yun, um, sorry, Hyun Soo showed up. And so clearly he knew what to do in order to take care of Hyun Soo, but that was basically the end of her story. And I was like, really? Like, it just feels like I said, in my opinion, Isu's storyline just turned out to kind of be a bit of a flop. Like why they kind of built her up to be like this, really crazy penultimate thing. And then literally she gives up in the end and then dies with a blade to the heart. Like that's it. <laughs> a, a girl again that we've seen with the like, ability to completely heal herself. Like it just felt a little too fast, I guess. And again, I get it. It was the finale. We didn't have a lot of time, but yeah, I feel like if you wanted, I don't know, either we could have started this finale, like 
back at around episode five and then let this go over three episodes. We could have made this a little bit more meaty, but I don't know. It just kind of felt very cop outy to me that she ended up just dying so quickly. And again, now seeing that the end that she did in fact turn into a neo-human and she's still here, I guess it wasn't for nothing, but it does kind of feel like a waste of her arc. It just feels like, why do we spend so much time in season two building her up to be this thing? And then it eff effectively, we just tossed it away, right? So anyway, so that was Isu. And then we see that for some reason, and this is the part that is the plot hole that I'm probably never gonna get. We see that Sang Wan finds San Wook's body again, which we saw walk into the fire, right? I'm not hallucinating that. We saw Sang Wook walk into the fire, or Sang Wan, I should say, into the fire last episode. And then the little bloody blob go in and go and take over the daughter's body. So how in tarnation did he find that body again? That fire has been burning for 60 years, how? I mean, unless maybe, I mean, it does take, I mean, okay, to be fair, to be fair, a regular bonfire would burn away skin, muscle, but bones would still exist, right? You actually need a really, really hot fire to burn, burn bone. So maybe he went back in and found the bones and then used his ability to put the body back together. But yeah, it's, it feels like a plot hole. <laughs> it just feels like a plot hole to me, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Because not only did he come back, he came back with a fresh fit. Like, okay, so that happened. He comes back as Sang Wook again, but we see that he, and again, I'm thinking of all, maybe, okay. I was gonna say of all things, why would you go back to the body that you knew kept you from being able to easily body jump for how long? But does that make sense? There's literally how many different monster bodies of humans walking around. You could have picked any of them. You picked the body that had you trapped for a year. Which, I mean, I, yeah, no, I guess he wasn't. What? I can't, okay, all right, I guess he was still alive. But anyway, that's what he does. And we hear like Onyuk is like, oh, you see like he's picking this body because he's trying to provoke you. Like he knows how to get to you. Again, kind of a dig of like, see, if, I, if you didn't have emotions like me, this wouldn't bother you. You'd still just whack his head off. But <laughs> anyways, uh, that doesn't even last long because we see that sang -ok did what he did back in season two. He trapped a song one in the body. He basically started, and we saw, like I said, the one thing I thought was cool was seeing the scar tissue come back, Sang Wook's scar tissue come back, showing that he was fighting back and trying to take control of his body back. Maybe not control of it, but he was doing what he did last season, basically saying, you're not leaving, bro. <laughs> if you're in here, we're in here together. But this time he's like, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna let you drive my body around like a vehicle again. This time we are going to hell together. So... We see that he literally does a slow military crawl into the fire while we hear sang -won protesting, begging, saying, no, I know you don't want to die. I can feel that too. Like, let's survive. And, you know, basically sang -won being like, I'm not talking anymore. We're going in this fire together. Then we got the flashback from season one. And yeah, we've seen that that's always been sang -won, right? He, he's always been someone who will do extremes to protect people. So that that was the end of sang -won. It ended up not being either Unyuk or... <laughs> Young Su who took him out. It was Sang -ook. He was the hero. <laughs> Since season one, who would have known? So yeah, that, I get it in a way because how else do you get rid of somebody that can inevitably jump in and out of bodies constantly when they're on the brink of dying? But yeah, I guess it did need to be Sang -ook because he could keep him in that body long enough to make sure they were fully destroyed this time. So, which I'm, I, I really hope they waited and made sure because that man is a hearty son of a, He's a hearty sum of a, but anyway, so that's how we ended it. Like that's how we took out this three season baddie was that the body he tra he's trapped in walked him, literally, no, I take that back. Tummy crawled him into the fire. That That's how we ended that. So I guess, I guess that that is the way you take care of a, a neo-human that's very hard to take down. But all the neo-humans ended up going. We see that uh, back in the stadium with the people who were trapped underneath, we we got that little double entendre from the captain, or sorry, from, yeah, from uh, Tack when he turned into the wall where he said, you can't go. And I said this last episode that I'm like, maybe he's not talking about the people. I think he's saying like either, as he's either protecting them from 
perceived danger outside or he's keeping something else inside. And then we see that thanks to the crazy girl, she showed all of them that actually the wall is let, it, it lets us through. Like it's not trying to hurt us. So Tack did work as a protection. He kept the monsters from being able to leave the stadium, at least through that exit. And of course, humans were able to go through just fine. So we see that's what happened. And then of course we have Acid Hands who was trying to sneak out with the people and he was not able to leave and he didn't know what to do because again, he was trapped with Kim, who of course him and Kim have a lot of beef. And so um, they start to have their little battle. But of course we know, even though he can't necessarily channel the way he used to with his acid, he can still fling that stuff everywhere and apparently just produce an endless amount of it, which is crazy. So he basically decides, okay, if I'm gonna die, everyone's gonna die. But then we see Spider Girl comes down and thankfully she decides to buy them the time that they need to get out before the whole place fills with acid. And she keeps, Mr. Acid Hands there with her. She's like, nah, we're, we're staying here together. So as I said in the episode, I feel like Spider Girl should have survived. She seemed like she had a good heart. I feel like she, if anyone deserved to evolve into a Neo-Human, it was her. But it is what it is, right? We needed to wrap up all these Neo-Humans that had evil intent. They all had to go, right? Even though Spider Girl wasn't directly a part of it, she was kind of a part of it. So basically all of those hybrid Neo-Humans that had like half of a real monster ability plus the human side, all but Hyun Su are gone, right? Hyun Su is now the last standing one that still is able to like manifest a monster ability uh, and still keep his humanity because everyone else that we know of is now gone. So that was a bit sad for the spider girl, but for the rest, I'm glad that was all wrapped up. Everyone was taken out there and that was pretty much it. Like that was that was the wrap up of all the monsters, etc. We went back to Unyu. Anyu monsterized. She her last vision was, you know, being back with her brother and her brother being the man that she half remembered and half wanted him to be. And then of course, like I said, ever complaining, she's like, this is too serene. Like this is fake. I don't like it. Like, ma'am, what you want torture? You want horror the entire time? Like, has that not been your life for the last year and a half? Like, breathe. But anyway, <laughs> that's all we saw of her. And then we see that when it was all said and done, Onyuk basically said, I'm gonna keep doing what I was doing, which is look for other Neo-humans like me. Do you do what you're gonna do? And then hyun is kind of like, don't you care at all about Onyu? And he's like, I, again, I said, she's going to be fine. Like she's a monster now. But he's like, if you wanna go find her, you do you, I'm out. And then Hyun Su is like, well, I don't know what to do kind of like from here, like his whole mission since he became a monster has been protecting people and now everyone's kind of safe. So now what does he do? And we hear Unyuk say, look, you know, just find other people who are like me and follow them. Like that will be, that will lead you somewhere at least. At least you'll be around people who are like you and who are gonna accept you and not be scared of you if that's what it comes down to. And then he also said, I have a feeling I know where she went. And he didn't tell Onyuk, or he didn't tell, sorry, Hyun Su where that was. He just said, I have a feeling I know where she is. She's probably already there. And he just left it at that. So anyway, we hear Hyun Su say, well, if she's out there, I'm gonna find her. I'm gonna make her human again. And then I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna bring you to her. Cause that was kind of what he said before they left. And I'm like, okay, Hyun Su, like, I guess. <laughs> I gotta remember his character's only like 19 in the show. But anyway, so I'm, um, you know, Onyuk's like, okay, bro, do whatever you need to do, I'm out. But then he has, of course, that little memory of what um, Onyu was saying, like, don't give up on being a human, basically, like relearn your emotions, no matter how long it takes, just keep relearning them. So he pulls out the picture, of course, after Hyun Su's left. And as I said, I don't think he ever stopped fully feeling, but I do think his emotions are to a point where if it was like a percentage, his emotions are at like 4%. They're there ever so slightly, but 96% of him is like dead inside. So yeah, that's what we had with them. They parted and then we see that the survivors, you know, they are sticking together, doing their best. You know, the girl that was sick, she's still plugging through with what she's got left of her me medication, but it looks like maybe she might turn into a new human at some point if, if uh, Unyuk's prophecy is true. And then basically, they're saying that they should still be looking for Onyu. Or well, at least the crazy girl was saying that. And then that's when he said, let's go back. And my guess is it's back to Sweet Home Apartments. But like I said, that part also makes no sense to me because we saw they went back in season two. There's literally nothing left. Like the place was bombed multiple times. But anyways, that's where they say they want to go. I mean, I guess there must be portions of it that are still intact and it is shelter. Like they can't be in the open is the point. Obviously it's, it's Korea. They have winter and extreme weather there, so they can't be outside. So anyway, that's where they end up going. And on their way, they see a whole sea of hippies. 
<laughs> a whole sea of stoners. No, basically a bunch of neo-humans because apparently they just are kind of out there, dazed and confused, I guess, when they first come back for a while. But that would, again, explain what we saw with Miss Kim last season. But yeah, so they meet up with them. And thanks to, I think, probably Ch um, Cha and Sue because he's been around them. He basically explained like, yeah, they're not gonna hurt us. They're not gonna hurt the humans. Like we should stick with them because the monsters stay away from them, right? They are a protection. So that's what they end up doing. And he said, it took a minute, but everybody kumbaya eventually. And as people became symptomatic, they, now, they weren't as scared of it now because they realized that a good chunk of them would probably evolve into what these new humans were. And if not, they have Hyun Su there to basically pull it back if it gets crazy. So kind of a good solution with the good, uh, a good amount of people that we have left. And then we saw, like I said, we see that Yun Su is back and our girl came back. Our girl Isu came back, although we didn't see her face, which is very interesting that they didn't show us her face. But anyways, she did get a chance at a second chance. So that's essentially how we ended it. Like everything was just, like I said, very kumbaya, wrapped in a bow, maybe a little bit too much of a happy ending in a way. But you know, as I said, I do think that for the scale of the show, they didn't have a ton of options of how to wrap it up. I do feel like we could have done better. It does feel a little rushed. It did, like I said, feel a bit anticlimactic. I feel like the build was so much and then the ending was like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like that meme of that girl you see on the internet, which is like, oh. Okay, that's it, we're done. So, but either way, I wouldn't say that it means that the whole season was a flop. I still think we had some good character arcs. I think we still wrapped up a lot of things that have been going since season one. I liked a lot of the characters that were in there. As I said, Lee Kyung was my favorite female character overall. She killed it from beginning to end, went out like a badass. Really wish she could have seen this future, uh, but it is what it is. But yeah, I feel like for a post-apocalyptic show, it was all right. It wasn't bad at all. I feel like it was definitely the right place to end it here. Like I said, a bit bittersweet because I do love my little sci-fi shows, but I do feel like the story for this is pretty much done. I do feel like there's so much more they could have done with Hyun Su though, especially now that he is in this very special place. But yeah, I think that it's enough for now. Like I think we don't need to continue with the story as it was as far as these apartment survivors and their story. I feel like we've told that as much as we possibly can. So I'm okay with it ending here. But yeah, I'd say overall, if I was to give it a star rating out of five, this season was like a 2.5. I do think we could have done a little bit better with things. I do feel like we got some fillers, but it wasn't bad and I did still enjoy it overall. I just feel like we could have wrapped up the ending just a little bit stronger. But I enjoyed it overall. I enjoyed the whole series. It was a fun watch. I hope you guys enjoyed taking in this series with me over all these years. It's kind of crazy to start in like 2021, I think. But here we are, we're done. We're done. So if you've stuck with me this whole time, thank you so much for watching along with me. I appreciate it so, so much. Your support, your comments, your views, they mean so, so much to me. And um, hopefully there's other things in my catalog you'll be interested in watching now that this show is over. I've got lots of fun stuff. So I'd love to continue this journey with you. Please continue with me if you so choose. And for the rest of you, thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video.